Most Lumix cameras have a built-in time-lapse function. Let's take a look at how it works using the Lumix S5. The first thing you have to do is set the camera into the time-lapse mode. Then go into the menu on the back of the camera, and that'll automatically take you to the time-lapse animation menu since you've already put the camera in that mode. However, if you're ever just looking for that menu anyway, you can find that under the photo menu, and then others, and time-lapse animation. Within here, we have a variety of options to control our time-lapse. The first option is the mode, which allows us to switch between time-lapse and stop-motion animation. In this case, we're gonna be doing a time-lapse. The next option is the shooting interval setting. Do you want that off or on? If you set it to off, then the camera will automatically start the next exposure as soon as the previous one is done. So if you have a one second exposure at the end of that one second, it'll start another picture immediately. If you have a one minute long exposure at the end of that minute long exposure, it'll immediately start the next photo. However, if I set the interval to on, then I can control the timing between shots. I'll go ahead and set this to on. Next, I choose my start time. I can set it to now or choose a start time. By setting it to now, as soon as I press the shutter button to start the time-lapse, the time-lapse will begin. By setting a start time, however, I can program it to start the time-lapse for, for example, tomorrow morning so that it can capture the sunrise. If you're doing this, by the way, a little tip, let's say you're in a hotel room capturing a beautiful sunrise view, you might wanna set the camera to silent mode so it doesn't wake you up. I'm gonna set it to now so I can start the time-lapse immediately. Next, we see the image count and the shooting interval. The image count and shooting interval allows me to define how many photos are going to be taken and the time or the interval between the beginning of each exposure. In this case, I could set it as many as 9,999 exposures, but I'll just set it to 100. And then I could set my shooting interval from 99 minutes down to just one second. I'm gonna leave it at five seconds here. And you'll notice as well at the bottom that we see a display telling me when that time lapse will complete. This actually takes into account the start time that you may have programmed, so you know if you're going to capture, again, as an example, the entire sunrise or not. We'll go ahead and set that. The last option here is exposure leveling, which you'll find on select Lumix cameras. This has an off or on setting. What exposure leveling does is it automatically adjusts the exposure ever so slightly between shots, ensuring that there is a smooth transition from one shot to the next to the next, which is really important when you're shooting something like a sunrise or sunset where the lighting is constantly changing. In this case, I'll go ahead and leave it off, and I'm ready to go. I'll press the shutter button, and the time lapse begins. We're gonna come back here in a few minutes and take a look at the final results of this, but while this is started, I wanna show you a couple of other things. The time lapse has just begun because I had set the time lapse to record starting now. However, if I had set it to start at a time in the future, as soon as I press that shutter button, the camera would immediately go to sleep and then wake up when it was ready to. Also, if you ever wanna interrupt your time lapse, just press the Q button, and that'll allow you to continue, pause, or end that time lapse. I'll go ahead and continue this. All right, I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Our time lapse is nearly complete, and while this one's only been a few minutes long, if you're shooting something that was many, many hours, you might want to consider adding external power by using something like a power bank like this one here that connects over USB-C. We have a video on that titled USB-C Power Options. I encourage you to check that out. In the meantime, it looks like our time lapse has completed. It'll bring up a menu offering to either create the video now or later. If I don't wanna tie up the camera now while it creates the video, for example, I wanna start shooting another time-lapse, I can choose no and then go into the menus later to build that time-lapse. I'm actually gonna show you how to do that in just a moment with a time-lapse that I shot earlier. But for now, let's go ahead and make one with this sequence. I'll choose yes. And then from here, I can choose my record quality just as if I had shot native video. I can choose anything from 4K 60p all the way down to 1080p at 2398. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 4K at 2997. Next is the frame rate. Now this is a different frame rate than the output frame rate. This is the frame rate at which the frames you shot were used to make the video. If I set it to 30 frames per second, where it's at right now, then it will use one frame of photo for each frame of video. If I drop this down to 15 frames per second, then we're gonna use a single frame of photo for every two frames of video. This also means that your video will be twice as long we can take this all the way down to one frame per second. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at 30. Then we have the sequence order. Is it normal or reverse? Do I wanna have my time-lapse sequence play forward in normal time or play backwards in reverse time? Because I shot a clock, I'm gonna go ahead and set it to reverse. And that's it. Select okay. It'll give you an estimated time to complete and let it go. Now that the sequence is done, I'm ready to play it. And there we can see our clock going back at super fast time in reverse. Now I'll build the time lapse from the sequence that I shot earlier today. To do that, go into the menu, navigate to the 
play menu at the very bottom. And then from here, you'll find under process image, a time-lapse video option. The camera will scan your card for any time-lapse sequences. The camera knows the difference between a sequence that was shot as a time-lapse and just any normal series of photos. In this case, it has selected the sequence I shot this morning. I press set. And then from here, I have the same video assembly options that we looked at earlier. I'll leave them the same, click OK, and away we go. And that's how you shoot time-lapse using your Lumix camera. Panasonic.